Welcome to the second F122 deep dive video. My name is James Brallant, social and creator manager on F122. And last time out, we spoke about the physics and handling changes that are coming to the game. But this time, it's all about VR and new features, which includes F1 Life. F122 launching on July 1st for Xbox, PlayStation and PC will have VR on PC for the very first time. VR isn't the only new standout feature that's coming to the game on July 1st. And I've got Senior Creative Director Lee Mather here with me today to talk about what else you can expect. Yeah, we've, we've known that the fans have really been looking for, for VR for some time. And obviously we needed it to be the right time for the team and the right time for, for the feature set of the game. But ultimately, we also needed to find the right partner to do VR with. It's something that which other Codemasters games have supported in the past. And we know the great team over at Behaviour have done an amazing job on the Dirt series. So we, we were really pleased that we were able to partner with them to bring VR to the F1 series on PC. So how long has VR actually been in development for in that respect? Yeah, so we started work on, on VR, obviously, at the, the beginning of the dev cycle for F1 2022. So I'd say there's probably sort of a nine month window of development for something like VR. And what sort of challenges have you faced when bringing VR to a game like F1 22? I think probably the biggest challenge in a game like F1 is that we, we always run at a very high frame rate. We've always aimed for the 60 frames per second and then obviously we went for the 120 on, on the current generation of consoles. Uh, and on PC obviously you do have more power available to you but again it's also determined by the spec of the PC that, that which you're running on. And also in VR there's certain things that the player has to, that impacts the player in, in sometimes in not the most positive way in that if you hit a barrier or you hit a wall aggressively in VR that's a really jarring experience. So we've had to do a number of things to ensure the player doesn't have uh, you know, things that make them feel queasy, make them feel sick, but still gets across the ferocity, the excitement of, you know, of driving a Formula One car. And I think the, that feeling of claustrophobicness amongst the other cars, especially when it's raining or, or when you're between the barriers in Monaco or Baku, you know, those are things that you know, are really spectacular in, in VR. So talk me through how the game works in VR. What can players expect when it comes to playing F122 in VR? So if you're driving any of the cars in the game, be that Formula One, Formula Two or the supercars, uh, the second you arrive at the circuit, that's when you put your VR headset on. You come out of the loading screen and you're in VR, you're in the car as you would be in real life. So it's very much that transition from I'm out in the, in, in the F1 life environment. I've now loaded into the race, the event that I'm going to take part in. I've left the, the hub if I was in, for example, my team or driver career. And then I'm now the driver. I've got the helmet on. I've got the headset on. I've got the audio coming through the, the speakers on the headset, which, which is phenomenal if you've got a headset which supports that sort of thing. Um, and there you are, you're in the car, you're in the garage. And I think just the, the amazing thing that got me straight away was sitting in the garage, looking around at the amazing level of detail that we've got in our environments, things that we've always done, but now you can actually really showcase them. So what sort of graphical details can the player expect when, when looking around in VR? Obviously, this is the first time that a player may have been able to sit in a Formula car in any case. It's crazy. It's um, It's things that really you wouldn't think are things that you know you'd be wowed by it so you look around the cockpit and there's all the switches and the buttons the stickers to you know sign off the car by the scrutineers you can see that's on the side you look around the garage you can see people working on the car you can see the screens you can see the detail on the screens those are the, the sorts of things that we've always done but you couldn't really see them with such a fixed camera position um, but also the things like you can see the, the ceiling of the garage you can see you know the real detail in the buildings I know um, one of the one of the guys did a slow drive around Miami, just you know looking up and admiring the buildings, and um, in particular the the Hard Rock Stadium. You know, it gives a real sense of scale, which I think you you don't really get uh, from any other way of looking of playing the game. You know, in VR you get a real sense of scale, and also the the you know the the, cl the closeness of the cars around you. Those are things that you just don't get without VR. I don't think. I think one of the things that struck me when I was playing it in VR was the speed as well, because you're sat right down in the cockpit, you're so low to the ground, and it's just incredible how fast those cars are when when you're taking corners. Like, you, you think about Monza and how fast you're going around that circuit. It's just that, that speed, the way it's presented in VR is amazing. It is, it's, uh, it's absolutely amazing. And also, I always remember, you know, from the very beginning, working on Formula One, talking to Anthony Davidson about how it feels in a Formula One car. You know, we know they're insanely fast. You expect it to be very fast, very hectic. And as Antoine said, that once you'd adjusted to that, 
you, you become so immersed in it, everything kind of slows down and it just feels so natural. And that's what you get in VR. You know, once you've done a few laps and you've acclimatized to that absolutely brutal pace, and, and obviously the hectic things going on during the race, especially at a race start, you sort of settle into it and it just feels very natural. And you kind of feel like, you know, you've got that moment to look left and see who's alongside you. You've got that moment to look at the apex and ensure that you're going to hit the apex. You know, it all sort of feels really, really natural. So you've talked a bit about the areas of the game that VR can be used. So F1, F2 and, and in supercars as well. Does that include online too? Yeah, yeah. We, we made a, a really strong conscious decision at the beginning of the development that we wouldn't segment out users who wanted to use VR online. So you can, yeah, you can use uh, VR while racing online as well. Would players only be limited to playing with others that are using VR or can they play with anyone? No, we allow mixed lobbies. Uh, again, we didn't want players to, to be disadvantaged or advantaged in either way. So, you know, you can play against players with or without VR and in a mixed lobby. So in terms of headsets that are supported, what are they? So we support in the Valve Index, Oculus Quest 2, if you use the link cable, uh, the Oculus Rift S, HTC Vive, HTC Vive Cosmos. And, and those are the ones that we've, we've had the chance to give it you know, the most thorough test on. So we're, we're confident that they work incredibly well. And most importantly, Lee, will it make me drive better? I think over time it definitely will. I think it's one of those things where once you've adjusted to it, you, you, you'll feel it's more natural. You know, it, it is natural. It's what you experience while driving a real car. And, and that's what I've always said, you know, uh, the, the way if something feels natural, it makes it easier. And that's, that's very much what I think you'll experience in VR. Now we've added some new broadcast and immersive features into the game. Can you talk a little bit about those? Yeah, there's a number of things we wanted to achieve here. So ultimately we always want to represent the sport as realistically and as thoroughly as possible. And we find that, you know, a lot of players really enjoy things like the formation lap, you know, the, the safety car periods and, and pit stops. Um, but not everybody wants to engage with them to the full degree. You know, sometimes the safety car period, the most exciting part of the safety car period it is the way the way it brings everybody together. And then there's the big, you know, release as all of the cars you know begin racing again. But what we wanted to do was for players who maybe didn't want to spend those sort of four or five laps behind a safety car, put in a broadcast version, which represents it very much as they see it on TV. So they get the experience of the safety car, they get the outcome of a safety car without having to drive that period. And that's something we also wanted to do with the formation lap and also the pit stops. But we also did more with both of those as well in that for the player who really wants to engage with them, we added a more immersive version of both of those features. So for the formation lap, you'll now be able to park your car in the grid slot before the race starts, obviously pointing your car at either a rival or to defend your position. Uh, and we also added a, a timing mechanic to pulling into the pit stop as well. So when you pull into your pit box, you have to time your turn in. And that's also impacted, of course, by uh, your, your my team and driver career, how you're doing with your pit crew as well there. So, you know, if you've been working on the perks for those uh, members of the team, they'll be more effective as well. But if you obviously time the turn in incorrectly, they may actually have some more problems. For example, stuck wheels if there's a tyre change or if the front wing needs to be changed, they may have issues, you know, swapping the wing. So again, it was it was catering for people who want the, the full immersive version to do all of those things themselves, but also for players who want a more casual experience or a more cinematic experience, there's, there's the broadcast presentation. You actually talked about the pit stops there and the and the errors that the, the pit crew can, can take. From what I understand, we, we had to recapture the, um, the motions of those as well, because obviously bigger tires so can you talk a bit, bit about that process? Like how do, you, how do you replicate a pit stop error in motion capture? Yeah, it's something that we've always been really, really strong with, I believe. You know, since the first game we did in 2010, we've always had probably some of the best realistic looking pit stops of any racing game. And that's something we've continued to be really precious about. So with the change in the size of the wheels and the tires, yeah, we had to recapture all of the pit animations because it doesn't look natural. You know, it has to be natural when they're carrying something of that size and weight because it gives us the, the natural motion. And then we're obviously able to adjust that to, to suit the timings. But yeah, we did have to get uh, you know, the opportunity to see how it would be if a, if a tire was stuck and, and how that would be, you know, maneuvered and, and you know, manipulated off the car. Now, I'm not a great driver at the game. I'll be the first to admit that, but I love battling with the AI when I'm playing offline. So have you added anything to F122 to help with this? Yeah, so again, in a, in a similar vein, you know, people want to play the game differently. Some people really want the challenge of racing against the ultimate AI, and, and they've got the ability to cope with that. They understand the strategies, they understand the timings of everything that's going on. But for some of our newer players, people who've come in maybe through a love of Drive to Survive, or people who are just picking up on the sport because it's really, you know, they're going through a massive resurgence at the moment. We've added in a new feature called Adaptive AI, 
Uh, and the concept behind adaptive AI is very much to cater to, to what you're looking for from the experience, which is you want to be part of the battle. You know, we've put in an amazing range of assists over the years. You know, now we've got things like the steering assist. We've got the, the off-track surfaces, which are more forgiving. We've got ABS traction control, automatic gears. Even we can we can even control you know the ERS and the DRS for the player if need be, so they can get that you know whatever level of assistance they find comfortable for them. But if they're not battling with other cars, then they're just driving around. And adaptive AI allows you to stay in the battle. It allows you to be racing with other cars, and then it's scalable. You know, so it, it automatically scales in its first instance. So you can obviously stay within the race. But if you're a player who's who's very new to the game. There's a further option which really slows the AI down when you've made a mistake. So they, they essentially will wait for you to a degree to allow you to stay amongst that, that group and amongst that battle. So I'll probably be using that more aggressive one <laughs> in, my, in my game. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, now, so have there been any changes to my team or career modes in the game? Yeah, we've made a number of changes. So first up, we had department events previously in my team. We've now expanded department events into both driver career and my team. And they're also now multi-threaded, so it could be that you'll be asked a question uh, the first race of the season, second race of the season, but you won't see an outcome for a number of races or you won't see the impact of your decision for a number of races. And we wanted that to, to represent the sort of thing you see in the world of Formula One. So it may be, you know, you've been asked to, to deal with something that may be going wrong at the factory and you've chosen not to do so. It's saved you some money in the short term, but will it, be, will it pay off in the long term? Will you end up having to spend more in the future if something goes wrong? So that was something that we felt was really a key part of the sport and, and very strong as well for things like my team. But also as a driver as well, you'll ask questions, you're asked to do things by the team. You know, there's always pros and cons to those, and that's very much what we wanted from, from the department events. But for my team as well, we also saw an opportunity to give the player different entry points into my team. So traditionally, my team, you would start off with very few resources at the back of the grid, you know, no upgrades on the car. But some players obviously want a shorter experience. They want to be in there winning straight away. Also, it's, it's fun to be at the front, isn't it? So sometimes you've sort of seen teams as well in recent years, like Haas, for example, they came in and they already had a very strong car. They had support from Ferrari. So they started midfield and occasionally, you know, towards the front. And that's now an option that the player has with my team. So they can start with a team at the back of the grid, no funding, the inability to get a, you know, one of the top drivers. Or you can start middle of the field where you've got a team that's got reasonable funding, better facilities, the option to, to hire a, you know, a more competitive teammate. Or of course you can go in as a, a team at the front, you know, a team that's got all of the budget, they've got the ability to hire a top driver, they've already got really strong facilities, your car's well upgraded, you're already competing for, for the championship. What sort of changes have been made to practice programs? Yeah, so practice programs have been fantastic for us since we brought them into the game. And we see them working in, in two ways. So for the player who's playing at the, you know, the extreme end of the scale, the very skilled player who's looking for those tenths, that's where the practice programs will show them where they can make up the time. It will show them where they're losing the time. But then to the, the player who's more of a, a casual player or somebody who's still learning the circuits, learning the game, the practice programs will give them a clear indication of, of what they should be doing on the circuit. You know, you'll see which corners you're doing well and which corners you're not doing so well. And it's very clear to a player at that end of the scale, you know, whether they are doing well or, or not so well. And then, as I say, for the, for the player who's looking for those tents, they can really analyse the data, especially by going back into the, the garage and viewing that. And we also wanted to change the presentation of this year. So not only is the scoring and presentation different, but we've done it through a on-track augmented reality system in a number of places where you can actually see your progress more effectively live while you're actually taking part in the session. Now, another new feature is F1 Life. Can you give us an overview of what F1 Life is all about? So F1 Life was inspired by, you know, the, the lifestyle of a Formula One driver. You know, we all know that they're incredibly well paid. They all lead what appears to be very glamorous lifestyles. They've got beautiful flats. They've got beautiful places where they live. They have great collections of supercars. They all dress very well. You know, it's the sort of thing that people aspire to. And I think it's a huge part of the sport and it's a huge appeal, you know, for the sport. I mean, that's why circuits like Monaco are so famous because of the glitz and the glamour that goes with it. And we also wanted to give the player Another opportunity to have more personalization, more customization, and to make the game feel like theirs, but also to showcase some of their progression and what they're like as a person, you know, with their friends. So, so F1 Life offers up a, a really lovely customizable driver location of, as, as a hub location for the player. In there, they can obviously choose the furnishings so that the, the area suits, you know, how they would like it to look. They can dress their avatar through a number of really exciting brands that we've worked with this year. And of course, they can also utilize that space to store their supercars. So supercars will obviously be won through gameplay. They're not purchasable items. You win them as you play. 
and those can be stored within your F1 life location, again, showcasing your progression. And, and that's important because you can visit your friends' F1 life locations to see their progression, to see how they've set up their environments. And also that's also the, the backdrop for the multiplayer lobbies. So now while you're waiting in a multiplayer lobby, you'll be in someone's F1 life location. So you'll see what their characters are wearing. You'll see what your other friends are, are dressed in. You'll see the, the way that they've dressed the location and the environment. You'll see the trophies they've won as we've now got a full 3D trophy cabinet that's part of that location as well. So F1 Life offers a lot for a lot of people and it's a, a really beautiful customizable hub to, to offer you know, a new level of personalization and customization. So what parts of the hub can we customize overall? Oh, it's, it's really detailed. So we can go as far as obviously the floor, uh, the seating, the cushions that you've got, the lighting that you've chosen, the, the wall art. You know, you might want little circuit maps on the wall. You might, might want some, there's, there's some Easter eggs in there from some of our previous games. You'll see the characters on the walls. You know, there's some really nice things that you can really make at your own space. And I think when you play a game as much as a lot of people do play Formula One or, or any game that you play, making it feel like it's yours is something that I think is, is really quite special. So you're saying I can get a Devon Butler inspired living room, is that what you're saying? Uh, there is a Devon. Yeah, there is a Devon. You can have him on your wall. Pay homage to the great. Exactly. How do players unlock new items in F1 Life? So it depends on the item types, obviously, but uh, yeah, there's going to be a, a smatter of items that will unlock through the podium pass, through both the, the free and the VIP tiers. We'll also be allowing players to unlock items, of course, through uh, challenges, which is something we've always traditionally done. And then there's the, the store as well, where players will be able to go in and, and you know, unlock items through the store, be that the brand store where they can purchase really cool branded clothing, you know, T-shirts, caps, uh, shorts, joggers, trainers, headphones, sunglasses. You know, we've got a, a really wide range of items that the players can unlock through, through multiple ways. And you mentioned the supercars. Whereabouts are they used in the game? So the supercars are very much inspired by the Pirelli hot laps that we witness when you watch Formula One race weekends. If, like me, you consume all of the Formula One content that goes on each week, you'll see the drivers regularly take out celebrities and, and press and dignitaries and, and scare them to death in supercars. You know, they, they throw them around, they really showcase their skills, they showcase what the cars can do. And we wanted to give the players something like that that they could engage with in between race weekends. So basically, for each race weekend, there's the opportunity to go and take a supercar out and take part in a very different on-track experience, be that drifting, you know, a cone gate challenge, a rival duel, you know, different styles of gameplay. It's an opportunity to give the player a little bit of a breather. You know, the intensity and the excitement of a Formula One race It's sometimes nice to have a little break in between to sit back, do something a little different, do something a little, uh, you know, unusual within the world of Formula One. But again, very relevant as the as we see from the sport. As I say, it's very much inspired by the Pirelli hot laps. And finally, for players playing F122 for the first time, where would you suggest they jump into first? Yeah, I, I always think, you know, don't rush your experience when you get into a Formula One game. I think first up, make sure you set your character up, make sure you choose how you want to represent yourself in the game, set up your location. Those are things that will stay with you. Before you go and set up your My Team, I always think it's, it's nice to give it some thought. Consider the colour scheme that you want for your team. Consider what the name you want to give your team. It's again, it's something that fits so beautifully in the world of Formula One. You know, you want your team to be part of, of that grid and part of that world. And then either go into time trial or go into Grand Prix, get a feel for the cars, get a feel for the assists that you want to play with, and then set a difficulty level for the AI that you think is, is sensible for you. And of course, you can always tailor that experience throughout the course of your driver career on my team. You can change those difficulty settings. But of course, you know, do you want to look for, you know, you want to go in and race for Mercedes, you should be winning championships. So set an AI difficulty that allows you to win races. If you want to start maybe with one of the other teams, you could also set the difficulty so you're winning. But then obviously that's not a realistic representation of the sport. But if that's the experience you're looking for, that's something you can do also. So I think, you know, take your time understand what options are available to you, understand the experience that you're looking for. You know, you might not want to replicate the sport, That's what's going on in the sport at the moment. You might want to be winning in a Williams, you might want to be winning in a Haas. You know, you've got that opportunity in the game, you can you can make it however you want, or you can make it as realistic. Um, so yeah, take your time, understand what's available, customize it to, to suit your preferences, um, and you know, and really, you know, dive into the game in that way. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lee, and to everyone watching at home as well. As a reminder, F122 launches on July 1st for Xbox, PlayStation and PC. And if you pre-order the Champions Edition, you'll get three days early access and some additional content too. We've got one more deep dive video planned for you in the next couple of weeks, so make sure you're subscribed to not miss that. 
Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as well so you don't miss any updates. In the meantime, see you on the track.